Hello. Hi, how are hey, you? Yeah. Hello. Recently, we did a, a, a pop-up shop in Newcastle and we had quite a few people came who are really very privileged to, to be part of their first walking stick journey. And they were asking us how to choose a walking stick, how to measure, how to actually, how to actually use one. Um, so, and I thought that the perfect person to actually have as a sort of, I'm gonna call it a clinic. It's not really a clinic, it's just a chat and a discussion, but the perfect person to have is you to help explain to people and anyone who has questions. So here we are. Um, and you're you're the professional. <laughs> All I do is make well, I make pretty things. <laughs> yeah, I think it's so important that we have this discussion because I don't know of the people watching right now if you've experienced this, but in my experience almost every person that I work with who needs any type of mobility aid, whether it's a walking stick, a rollator, anything, they're not ever taught how to use it. They're just either told, go get one, go use one, or they're given one and just, they go home without ever being told any guidelines. And there's, there actually are guidelines of how high it should be, how, uh, how it should fit according to your body, how to use it. So yes. it's a really important discussion. And it's for safety and it's for comfort and it's yeah. for your fu future health, isn't it? So it's all got to be taken into consideration when you when you start to use one or if you feel you're using one, but you feel there's something not quite fitting right about it. Um, right. If you have a pain when you're using it or pain afterwards, then it's something that, that might need looking at. But and I know we, we receive a lot of a lot of questions from people who who want to know how to how to do it properly. So. I am going to listen to your advice and you take it away. Where, so if somebody comes to us and they say, Lindsay, this is my first walking stick. What on earth do I do? How do I do it? What do I need? Yes. So the first thing that I think is most important is making sure it fits you correctly. And so the way to do that, I'll see if I can demonstrate. The video is shorter here, so hopefully you can see my full body. Yeah. Uh, but what you're going to want to do... Perfect. Okay. So what you're going to want to do is first and foremost, if you normally walk around without wearing shoes, then measure without having shoes on. Mm -hmm. But if you normally do use shoes, have the same shoes on that you normally use because our height does change if we're wearing shoes or not wearing shoes. Yeah. And the ideal height would be that you're standing up with your regular posture and you drop your arms down by your side. And I've, of course, already fitted this one to me, but the ideal height would be at your wrist bones. So if I come a little closer, you can move my angle down slightly. I'll see that. Uh, so if I come closer, you'll see it should be hitting right at that bone. Yeah, right so where you're talking pinch. about this bone here, or are we talking about lower down? Are we talking about this bone? Yeah, so we're talking about the bigger bony prominence. That's so, right. yeah these guys that's right so where you can yep. feel not not the gap underneath yep not the gap underneath the, the, not your fingers it should be your fingers it's more of yeah. that bone and so yeah. basically right if you'd go here or here it's the bone that's right on the other side of where yeah. your joint moves yeah and one thing to consider too is you might have different arm lengths from one side to the other that that's actually pretty normal is that quite so, common is it, it is common that? Right. Yeah, absolutely. And so that, that brings us to another thing that's really important, which is what side do you use it on? Yeah. And so. we've, we've come across this question as, as well. For me, it's obvious because I always had a problem on one side. So right. but for someone else, it might be more, more complicated. Yeah. And so the side, typically where you'd want to start when determining what side you should be using your walking stick on is it comes down to which side of your body, your right side or your left side is weaker and which is stronger. Mm -hmm. So generally speaking, we'll get more specific in a second, but generally speaking, you want to use the walking stick on the opposite side of your weaker leg, right. which is not intuitive. Most people feel like, okay, my right side is weaker, so I'm going to hold on to my walking stick on the right side. Yeah, you would. But, yeah. yeah, but what that does is 
when you're putting your weight through the right side of your body, which is your weaker side, you're putting more weight through that weaker side. And so you're more likely to fall or collapse. So by holding on with the stronger side of your body, then when your weak leg is forward, you're able to distribute some of your body weight to the other side of your body, the stronger side. Okay, okay. So the first thing you want to think of is which side is weaker and you're going to hold on to the walking stick on the opposite side, on your stronger side. Yeah, so the, the next complicated question is, what if you have a dynamic disability? What if it changes? What if you have different, different days that are worse on different places and different sides? Yeah, so you can absolutely change side to side. Maybe one day your right side is weaker and therefore you'll mm -hmm. hold on to it with your left arm or another day your left side might be weaker. So you absolutely can go back and forth. I would suggest, as silly as this may sound, practicing walking with it on both sides. That should be one of your exercises so that you can get the coordination down. Another thing that I've run into is, let's stick with the example of your weaker side is the right leg. So theoretically, you'd wanna hold it on the left side, but you have a broken left wrist, mm -hmm. or you have a lot of elbow pain, or yeah. you can't use your right hand, maybe it's numb, or just doesn't have the strength. So then it comes down to safety. That would not be a safe situation to hold on with your left hand. Yeah. So start with that as a guide, but then fine tune it to what you need. So in that case, I would say, well, hold on with your right side. Mm -hmm. Even though that's your weaker side, you're going to be safer walking with it on that side. Mm -hmm. And that's when the practice comes in. So you've, yeah. got to, you've got to practice holding it on, on your weaker side. Uh, yes. And then when maybe if, you're, if your disability changes another time, you can go back to using it on the, on the left, on the correct. I'm always loath to say that there's a correct way to do it because the way you do it that's safe for you is kind of the right way. Is, is, that, is, is that the correct way to think about it? Yes, absolutely. Because if you think of like the textbook correct way, mm, that's mm. not going to be correct or safe for every single person. Yeah. So yeah, and I think it's an important concept to understand because if, well, your body might change, what's correct yeah. for you today might not be correct for you a year from now, or yeah. vice versa. Last year, what was correct for you might be different than today. So it's important to continue analyzing different approaches. For example, the height, we reviewed that it should be at these bones on mm -hmm. our wrists. However, yeah. if you've been using a different walking stick for years and years and years that was taller than yeah. that, yeah. then lowering it to that might be unsafe for you. You might not like it at all and it makes you feel unstable yeah. or vice versa. If it was lower and we're saying, okay, raise it to here. If yeah. you feel unstable, don't do that either. So you got to take your body into mm. consideration with all of these. And if you do, if you're advised or you feel like you want to make changes, are you better making them in really small increments and, yeah. and not, not making any big changes or multiple changes this together? So changing the side and changing the height. Just doing right. Small yeah. Changes. And I don't, Absolutely. I don't think it necessarily matters which one you choose. Um, you know, if you, you can decide to change the height first and just see how that feels mm -hmm. or keep the height the same, but you decide to um, maybe change the handle mm -hmm. or change the walking strategy that you're using or, or any of the other topics mm -hmm. or areas that you can change yeah. or adjust. What if you're like me and you're kind of mid fifties older and you're starting to, sh to shrink a little? Cause I'm shrinking. My mum, mm -hmm. my mum, bless her heart. It's her birthday today. Happy birthday, mum, if you're watching. Happy birthday. <laughs> yeah. And she, uh, she won't mind me saying this, but she's very small <laughs> and she's shrunk. So what if you're aging like, like me and you're starting to shrink? That needs to be looked at as well, doesn't it? Absolutely. And one strategy, if you didn't want to get a brand new walking stick, is you could wear shoes. So purposely make yourself a little bit taller mm -hmm. so that the current cane or walking stick that you have does fit you um, or get a new one. Because, yeah, yeah the, the, the more you shrink, uh, the 
the bigger difference, you might notice that your walking stick that used to fit you here is actually fitting you here. Yeah. And when you do that, so let's pretend I shrunk. So when you do that, instead of having my uh, elbow at this angle, now my elbow's at this angle. Yeah. And that's yeah. a lot of pressure for your elbow. And you could um, end up with elbow bursitis or elbow mm -hmm. pain. And then if you have bursitis or pain, you're not going to be able to use the walking stick on that side because it's going to hurt too much to put weight through it. So that's right. It's important to make sure it fits you correctly. Yeah, absolutely. And then somebody just said, oh, you can cut it, which I suppose you can cut yeah. most um, metal um, canes or certainly our canes you can cut. And yeah. even even crutches, I guess you can you can cut crutches if they turn yeah. out in the wrong the wrong height. Yep, and sometimes too with with crutches or certain canes, they do have they are adjustable, mm -hmm. so you can move the notches up or down, and that's a, a good strategy if it does feel like too big of a leap. Mm -hmm. I've had some clients before where instead of touching here, they were up here, and it was too big of a leap for them to automatically go down here. Or yeah. vice versa, it was down at their fingertips, and they had to come up here. So we used incremental adjustments yeah. to get up to the appropriate height. So sometimes um, when when I see people sometimes using walking sticks, and I can see that they're using them the wrong, the, the, the incorrect length, what I would, ooh, I've just said incorrect, that sometimes their shoulders are at different heights. What does, yeah. the, what does that mean that they're doing? They don't look comfortable. Yeah, so the shoulders being at a different height can be a few different things. First and foremost, it absolutely could be that the walking stick is not the appropriate height. Mm. Uh, secondly, it might actually be uncomfortable or their arm isn't strong enough to actually manage the walking stick. So what, are, what we do to compensate for that is we bring our shoulder up and in and we hold our arm close to our body because it feels safer and more secure. But that can result in shoulder pain, neck pain. Mm -hmm. And as I recently mentioned, the more pain the more you're not going to be able to use it because it's going to hurt yeah, in order absolutely. to walk. So yeah, again, first and foremost, you can potentially adjust the height, but mm -hmm. also practice walking with the appropriate upper body function. So you would want to practice. I'm a very visual person, so I like to demonstrate. <laughs> no, we know. We, we like you for that. We love you for that. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, if you're walking and you're kind of like this, mm. not good for many reasons. So practice lowering your shoulder. And the first exercise would be, can you stand here? Can you do this and mm. stand here for 20 seconds, 30 mm. seconds, five minutes? Can you do that? If so, okay, can you move forward? and back without the, the shoulder With, coming without the, yeah yeah you have to retrain your brain to do the correct arm movement and then of course you take a step and then maybe come back mm -hmm. and then you could progress to okay can i mm -hmm. take two steps is this something that you do in front of a mirror so you can see how your yes. your body's performing Absolutely, because a lot of the times, as obvious as it is to someone else, to us who might be looking at someone doing that, it's not as obvious to the person who actually is experiencing that. So using a mirror can be your best friend. Mm. Because when, when you're, no, go on, sorry. I was gonna say another thing too, this doesn't always happen, but if you're doing this, you uh -huh. might also be leaning this way or this way. Yeah. Or maybe your shoulders are even, but you're leaning like this and you're yeah. putting more weight through your arm than you need to. Yeah. What yeah. about also, I love having you here. I can ask you all these questions. Um, <laughs> what, what about also when you see somebody who's using a walking stick and it's not um, at um, perpendicular to their body, they're using it at an angle. Yeah. Why might, why might that be happening? Um, sometimes it's not intentional. Most of the times it's not intentional. If you think about our arm swing, when, when we throw our arm forward, it's at an angle. We mm. don't keep our arm down by our side the whole time mm. that we're walking. So oftentimes we just throw our arm forward and it just lands like that. Wherever it lands, yeah. Yeah. So it's important to, again, retrain your brain that when you put the, the walking stick down, you want it to be flat. 
Yeah. Um, it might be easier too. It does require more control to put it down flat versus forward. Mm. So you'd want to make sure to train again, practicing putting your, your, the bottom of it down so that you're using the full surface. You're more likely to slip or trip if it is on its side. And that brings me to actually one of my favorite things about your walking sticks. It's the tips. The tips. Are, yeah. It's important, isn't it? That, that that hits the ground at the right, yes. at the right and, shape. Yeah. The grooves that you have are so strong and sturdy compared to other cane or walking tips that I've seen. And so the tip is really, really important. And if you are someone who lands with it, at the wrong angle like maybe you strike down here this yeah. is going to wear out faster and mm. that could result in a fall or tripping so i often suggest looking at the tips at least quarterly mm -hmm. whether cobblestone stone you know whatever surface we're using it on it can yeah. wear them out so yeah. look at them and make sure that they are still defined grooves you can do that with your shoes as well can't you you can yes. tell whether you walk because i used to walk terribly um, where I used to walk and my, my shoes always used to wear on the outside so that that was how mm -hmm. how I was finding my balance when I walked yes yeah yeah shoes I love looking at shoes it can tell you so much about someone mm -hmm. without yeah. ever seeing them walk just based yeah. on where the grooves are where they're uh wearing out it's a good yeah. strategy yeah we're getting lots of questions about handles and the different shapes of handles and what's kind of less um, appropriate for certain conditions and more what's more comfortable and not what, what the different shapes mean. So you take mm -hmm. it. Yeah, so I really love this handle. However, what I have found from most of my clients when I work with them in person is that it's really just a matter of what's comfortable for you mm -hmm. and your hand, depending on how big or small your hand is. If you have arthritis, something like this that's flat on top might be more uncomfortable, whereas mm. the more rounded ones might feel better because it's a more natural curve. Mm. But everyone is different. So my best recommendation is to go to a local store near you. Sometimes at, here you can go to a convenience store and find mm. walking sticks or canes there that have different tops. I would suggest going to one of those stores, uh, just seeing how it feels for your arms. You know, what angle does it feel like for your elbow, for your shoulder? Is it comfortable? Mm. And then from there, then I would go back to a better, like your brand, <laughs> where yeah. it actually is good ones. But try it out first, because yeah. they do feel a little bit different based on what the design is. Yeah, and that, that can be another situation where you're just given something, not necessarily because it's been chosen specifically for you. It could literally be there. I had this in the cupboard and I thought about you, you might use it and you just go walking off with thinking, this is how walking sticks feel. And it might not be the case. Absolutely. And you know, some people love walking sticks that don't have any handle. You know, it's mm -hmm. more of, it kind of looks more like the bottom and they yeah. hold like this as if it yeah. is a walking stick. So yeah. That would be an option too. A lot of it, in my experience, does have to do with personal preference and strength in your wrist and in your hand, the angle of your wrist and hand that's comfortable for you. So it is important to try them out. Yeah, we have um, some customers that have Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, uh, yeah. the, the hypermobile type. And I've seen discussions where um, they've, talked about how their their wrists can be either dislocate or close to dislocation if they choose the incorrect handle and that yeah. that must be so frightening that if you just by picking something up that, that you can do that but that yeah. that's in, that makes the choice even more important doesn't it absolutely and the, again that kind of brings us back to looking at the whole arm it's really easy to forget about your shoulder and your elbow and only focus on your wrist and your hand because that's the part that holds on to it. Mm -hmm. But if it doesn't fit you appropriately, you could have more wrist or hand pain or be more likely to dislocate your wrist in that case if your shoulder is not in the right position mm -hmm. or if your elbow is too bent or too straight. If it's too short, you're gonna have to reach further towards the ground. Yeah, yeah. That could cause you to, to trip or stumble or have something yeah. dislocate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what about people who 
change for um, from one aid to another for different days because they, they do have a dynamic condition. Um, what about people who go from, say, crutches to, like I, I always used to use crutches, um, wheelchair and walk, and walking stick. So I used to move from one to the other. Is that, that safe to do? That's okay. Absolutely. Yes. I, I'm a huge advocate for having as many different mobility aids as possible because there might be days where a walking stick is exactly what you need. Mm -hmm. There might be other days where it's so fatiguing for you to use that, that you don't even go out because you're too tired. But yeah. if you were to have a rollator or a four wheeled walker or mm -hmm. any type of uh, more stable mobility yeah. aid, than you yeah. would. And in my opinion, it's all about being independent. Yeah. And so if using a rollator one day allows you to be independent and then a different day using a walking stick, maybe a different day you don't use anything, you know, <laughs> get yeah. as much as you can so you have more tools to help you stay independent. Yeah, it's what, whatever you need to make you function at how you need to function on that particular day, isn't it? Yes, yeah. yeah. And, and I, I, I know we, we do have um, a lot of people who say, they're coming from crutches onto walking sticks or a, a, a walking stick. And, and I, I'm, I'm always really nervous to advise them on that because I know with crutches, you do put a lot more of your body weight through them, don't you? The walking stick is, is meant as a balance. So then they would have to decide where their, their balance um, situation is then. Yeah. And that's a really good point because it depends why they were using crutches in the first place. If it was because of an injury and they weren't supposed to put any weight through one leg or very little weight through one leg, then yes, you need to put a lot of your body weight through the crutches. Mm -hmm. However, if we're talking just about general mobility due to weakness, not necessarily an injury where you're not supposed to put weight through it, you should, no matter what mobility aid you're using, you should only be putting no more than 50% of your body weight through the mobility aid. That's even a lot. Mm. Because the more you have through the mobility aid, the more body weight through the mobility aid, the more likely you are to trip or fall if that mobility aid moves. Mm. Additionally, the more likely you are to get shoulder pain, elbow pain, wrist pain, because you're putting, our, our arms were not meant to bear that much weight. No, they weren't, no. So how, how do you know when you're putting 50% of your, your body weight through your, your aid? Yeah, I wish that someone would invent a body weight scale, but that's the size of something that would fit in your palm. How great would that be? <laughs> well, that's what you've got to do. <laughs> Yeah, right. So so it's, it is challenging to figure out how much body weight you're putting through your upper body. What I typically recommend is to stand comfortably with your mobility aid and ask yourself, what percentage of my body weight do I think is through my arms? And you can usually tell, like if I have a lot of weight and I can tell my weight's on my toes, not on my heels, yeah. Yeah. I can feel like 80% of my body weight now is through my my arm so once you figure out generally it does not need to be exact but if you feel like oh my gosh yeah i have a lot of weight through my arm right now mm. practice as an exercise taking weight off of it so if i'm starting with 70 percent weight through my arm i'm going to try to practice only putting 60 percent of my weight through the arm yeah and then once i get better at that 50 and then 40 and then eventually it's there, it's there it's to support you, you can keep it there, but it's minimal weight through your arm. Yeah. And that's true if it's a walking stick, if it's a roll leader, any mm. mobility aid, if you are putting a lot of body weight through it, you have to work on balance and you have mm -hmm. to work on holding that mobility aid and taking weight off of it. Mm. So the, the, uh, there's so many ways to do it wrong, isn't there? There's, there's so many ways to do it so that that you are putting yourself in danger. So actually finding out about it is, is really important. So where's the first stop that someone should make if they want to talk to somebody, apart from trying to, to, to join in in something like this, where's the first place that they should look for advice? Yeah, the first place, I, I'm a huge advocate for in-person care. So if you do have a physiotherapist or a physical therapist that you can see in person to help them evaluate the way that you're walking, mm -hmm. because 
and it depends on what your goals are. But as we've been discussing, there's so many ways just with this one device, how it can be tweaked for you specifically. Mm -hmm. So even if it's just one appointment to have someone look at the way that you walk, help determine what height you would need or, mm -hmm. you know, what, what handle might be best for you. So you could reach out to a physiotherapist or you could also reach out to a clinic that has um, prosthetics or ankle foot orthoses. They are also really great people to evaluate your walking. And yeah. so that would be another resource for in-person work that you could do. Yeah. And if you live alone, it can be a little bit more challenging to measure. Mm -hmm. uh, so you could use someone else to, you know, you're standing up tall with your arms down by your side and you have someone else measure how far your wrist bone is to the floor. Yeah. Yeah. But if it's just you and you already have a mobility aid, you can do it. It's a little bit trickier, but you can see, okay, bang it here. Do you feel it? Yeah. Yeah. So you can do it by yourself as well. Yeah. So sometimes we have, um, we have people that say, how do I know I need a mobility aid? And that whichever mobility aid they're thinking about, whether it's it's crutches, a, a rollator, um, a walking stick, whatever. How how do I know that I need one? There's lots and lots of different ways. The first way that I always like to point out is if you find that you are walking less or isolating yourself or not going out to do the things that you used to do because it's too fatiguing mm -hmm. or you lose your balance or it's frustrating for any reason. If you are isolating yourself, that is a huge reason to get a mobility aid so that you can participate in life, go out and do the things that you want to do. Yeah. So that would be one thing. Another thing would be if you are tripping more or losing your balance more, and this can be tricky because so often I will be working with a client in person and it's our very first day working together. And I always like to walk behind them so that I can mm -hmm. evaluate their walking. Mm -hmm. So I watch them walk down to our treatment room and the entire time they're holding onto the wall. They're just kind of grazing it. Yeah. But we sit down in the treatment room and I ask them, do you ever touch walls or furniture as you're walking? And they'll say, no, I never do that. You don't even realize it. So yeah. if someone else tells you, hey, you touch the furniture a lot or you're touching the walls, that's yeah. another sign that even though you might not feel off balance yet because you're compensating in different ways, you, you have something in you that's weaker or off balance that mm -hmm. can be easily addressed with exercises and or using mm -hmm. a mobility aid. So if you're touching things more often, if you're actually tripping or losing mm -hmm. your balance, but yeah. mere falls are yeah. something to look out for. Like you didn't fall because you caught yourself. Yeah. If, you're, if you get more of those, that's another this example. Time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what, what, what about for the, the people who have in their life um, people who um, don't support them in using a mobility aid and they're, they're told that you shouldn't use one or you're, it's giving in if you use something? What about, what about those, those people? What, what can we say to them? Yeah. And I actually work with some of those people because they feel that themselves. Like they feel that they're giving in if they're resorting to yeah. using a mobility aid. And the best thing that I can think of is to reassure yourself or that person who is making you feel that way, that using this helps you stay mobile, helps mm. you stay in society because without using it, you wouldn't be able to go no. out safely. No, the and world gets smaller, doesn't it? And you, yeah. you, you feel that and you feel a, a bit diminished yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the more diminished you feel, it's a downward spiral. If you're not going out of your home or even walking as much in your home because your mm -hmm. mobility is a little off, you're going to get weaker. Your yeah. balance is going to get worse. It's a downward spiral. So yeah. as soon as you notice that something is a little off, I'm a huge advocate for right away exercise and mobility aid if and when you need it. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it's a shame that there is such still um, a stigma um, surrounding using yeah. a mobility aid, whichever aid it is, again, whether it's a wheelchair, rollator. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking, we're, we're not talking about particularly walking sticks, we're talking about any mobility aids. 
the, mm -hmm. the, the stigma surrounding them. What I mean, I, I try and tell people my story of my story with my, my journey with with mobility aids as, as a younger sort of person and it, it is a it is a big journey to, to go on and each it is a hurdle to get over it does take a lot of um it does take a lot of confidence away from you but then the confidence comes back in 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 spades full because you're part of the world again that's how i felt yeah. um it's I, I try and, and encourage people as much as I can, but I know there is still such a big um, stigma surrounding them. Absolutely. And, you know, there are other tools as well, like first get a mobility aid and just practice within your own home. Mm -hmm. Get really comfortable walking in your home with a mobility aid and then maybe you'll feel more comfortable using it outside or in yeah. public. And this is where, where your company comes into play too, because look how awesome these are. Mm -hmm. I love, you gotta feel confident with it. And not only confident in the balance that it allows you to have, but the confidence that you feel. Mm -hmm. So if having a super bright one with you know green and pink, that's my vibe. I know some people like clear, they don't want anyone to see it at all. Get a clear one. So you've gotta feel, confident in it yeah. Yeah. in both ways the stability but also how it makes you feel yeah and i think what what we try to do here and this is the only time i'm going to specifically talk about our sticks is that we try to let them express how you feel inside it's a bit like putting on a bit of clothing it, it says a bit about you and if you want to be bright that that's what it says and I, that I've, I've found that really really helpful for me it's it's an extension mm -hmm. of me and it says a yeah. bit about my personality Absolutely. And yeah. it's also important too to understand that. So I mostly work with people who have multiple sclerosis, but mm -hmm. regardless, using a mobility aid is not a downward spiral. It doesn't mean that if you're using a walking stick this year, then next year you're going to need two and then next year you're going to need a wheelchair. Our yeah. minds play tricks on us. That's usually the first thing we think of, but that's not the case. And what I talk to my clients a lot about is using a mobility aid now might actually mean that you don't need to use it all the time a year from yeah. now you know do your exercises strengthen and yeah. you can actually get stronger because you're using a mobility aid so uh that's something to keep in mind too yeah so it's actually it, it can be the opposite the myth is you start using one you're just going to go downhill uh, but the actual reality can be it will help you and that, yes. that's something that that you can say to um anyone that you've got in your life that isn't supportive of you mm -hmm. using a mobility aid and we, we do we do yeah. come across that absolutely um, this is what i love about this this platform everybody's so encouraging and warm to each other and there's a lot of support and i think that's also important isn't it to try and speak to other people that are in the same the, the same sort of situation as you so you know you're not alone um, is, is that a good idea as well to reach out and try and speak to other people? Yeah. Oh my gosh, absolutely. And it can be a little tricky because, you know, some people aren't going to have the same mindset as you and it might, um, it might not be a good fit mentally if mm. someone is more focused on the downward spiral. There's so many people who are going, who might not ever meet you in person, but they're so supportive of you and they can share their experience. I'm a huge yeah. fan of support groups, accountability partners, because it can really help pull you out of the dumps, especially on those days where even if you're normally a positive person, you're yeah. going to have those days where you're just feeling down and discouraged. So to have someone to help pull you back up can be so, so beneficial. Yeah, exactly. And I, I mean, I, I certainly have thought that this is a strange place to find that kind of support. When, when I first sort of joined Instagram, and I, I joined not as a business, I just joined as Lindsay. And it was a strange place to find that support. But it, it's, it is big. It's, it's huge. And I, I really, I love this community for that. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's crazy. The, the coolest thing I find about Instagram and social media in general, is how you can really build true friendships from never having met someone in person. Mm -hmm. You know, and I have one of my um, bridesmaids for my wedding was someone I met on Instagram years and years <laughs> ago. Yeah, we've been, we, and we've met, we live about two hours away. But, you know, you can really become so close with people. And especially if you have something in common, like mobility issues, or, yeah. you know, 
you can help each other out. So I, I love that you can develop close friendships, but also you're in the UK. I'm over in the States. Like, we can just meet so many people that we wouldn't yeah. have otherwise normally met. Yeah, no, I love it. I, I really, really do. Well, I mean, I, this is how I've met you and when we've, we've become great friends. I've made some great friends on, uh, on, on here mm -hmm. and people who are a lot younger than me that I may have not ever um, been in a, a, a life situation where I might have met them. So it, mm -hmm. it's a great, it, it covers all sorts of um, dif different um, I don't know what, what, what to call them, that diff you know, different types of people that you wouldn't normally... Yeah not normally meet. This was something that I really wanted to do because mm -hmm. I'm conscious that I make pretty things. I'm not a doctor. I'm not an expert. I've done it, but that does not make me an expert. And I've never, pro I've never professed to be an expert. So it was really important to me to have, to have you to do this, this together um, yeah. to, be, to give the advice that, you know, you're receiving from a, a professional Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so glad that you asked me because again, very few people, 5% or less of the people that I work with that have been given a walking stick or any mobility aid or suggested to use one were ever taught how to use mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's such an important conversation. So I'm, I'm glad you thought of it and invited yeah. me to, to talk to I you. Mean, it, it, it prompted me because at the, the recent pop-up shop that we did in Newcastle, we had, I'm, I'm going, I can count them on one hand, but the, the, the people that came in and said, this is my first walking stick, I don't know how to use it. Mm -hmm. and, and I thought, you know, I, I've been, I mean, I can, I can advise you on what I know, but I'm, yeah. not, I'm not a medical professional. They didn't know where to go to get, mm -hmm. to, you know, to get the advice. Yeah. Um, people were saying they'd been into a, a chemist and picked a, a walking stick up in a like a, a, a pharmacy and said to the the assistant, "Will this be all right for me?" And they say, "Well, I don't know." Um, right. And you know, probably quite right. They should say they don't know instead of yeah. trying to you know carry on and give advice. So yeah, mm -hmm. this this was really uh, really important. That and we we can do this again. And I know that you you specialize in MS, but that mm -hmm. does actually cover um a, a lot a lot of areas in other conditions as well doesn't it that there's a, a crossover in lots of areas absolutely yeah so ms is a neuro neurological neuroimmune disease but there's so many other neuro, neuromuscular or neurological diseases that have very very similar symptoms and so there's so much overlap and even if you don't have a neurological condition if we're just talking about the principles of walking mm -hmm. there's certain exercises that everyone should be doing so yeah. uh in these everything that we talked about today with the height and uh which side of the body to use it on all that is for everyone yeah. not just not just people with ms or neurological yeah. Uh, yeah. diseases yeah, yeah. So if anyone out there has been thinking, gosh, maybe I, maybe I do need something, or if someone said to you, no, you shouldn't be using that, that mobility aid, what are the benefits that they can expect from using something, that, that they can expect less fatigue? Mm -hmm. uh, um, less, less fatigue and also kind of the same thing, but worth mentioning, more energy. You know, because sometimes the goal is less fatigue so that you have more energy. And yeah. that's the part that feels good. So, yeah. I like that. That's a glass half full, glass half empty <laughs> quote. That you have less energy, but more, uh, less fatigue, but more, more energy. So that they can expect that. They can expect less um, stumbling and potential accidents. Yes, better walking, reduced trips and falls, better yeah. walking endurance so you can walk further distances or for a longer amount of time, mm -hmm. more balance so you won't feel as wobbly, so you'll feel more secure. Yeah. Another, another tip too, if this is your first time ever using a mobility aid, what, you know, regardless of what mobility aid it is, I want to encourage you right off the bat, pay attention to how much weight you're putting through the mobility yeah. I had yeah. two experiences recently. One was my dad who had to get toe surgery and so he couldn't put any weight through one of his feet. And then just last week, my husband rolled his ankle. And so <laughs> in both situations, I gave them, one of them I gave my rollator and another one I gave the walking stick and both of them, I didn't tell them how to use it. I just gave it to them. And this is what both of them did. So these are strong men. They don't have any, any other weaknesses other than this injury. And this is what they both did. 
Huh? They put so <laughs> much weight through it. And I yeah. wish I had my roll leader here as both hands. And he put all of his body weight through it. And I was like, what are you doing? No, no, no. Like, use it as much as you need, but also as little as you need. Like, yeah. it's, yeah. we we are ingrained to as soon as we have something in front of us to put as much body weight as we can through it and lean. in order for it to help us so yeah. if this is your first time you might not even realize it but that's what you might do is put a lot of weight through it only put as little body weight through the device as you need because you yeah. don't want to train your brain that you need more than you actually do that's right from from straight away that's uh, that's right. a good idea if you've been thinking about it then generally speaking, something's happened that has ma made you feel like you need one and that, that you would benefit from it. So I, I mean, I, I would say give it, you know, give it, give it a go for sure. That's Absolutely. my big boy. My big boy is barking there. So, <laughs> I want to go out. Woo woo. Yeah. But, but I, I'm going to go and let him out and I'm going to thank you a huge amount because all that was just great advice really good advice yeah. well thank you so much for having me again having this platform to share this information is so important because again you don't yeah. find it many places so yeah. thank you for having me and